All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're talking about CTDI to millisievert. So going from computed tomography dose index to an effective dose in CT. I'm Brian Nett from How Radiology Works. We have bite-sized content in radiology. On our website, we have a calculator. So if you go on over to howradiologyworks.com and go on up to the right, click on the calculators. And one of the calculators is about going from DLP to millisieverts. That's the one you wanna click on there. For today, we're gonna to skip on over the calculator part and go through the discussion of how we get from CTDI to the effective dose. We also have a video talking at a high level about the different types of dose that we measure, especially with CT. Talk about milligray, which is an absorbed dose. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about here. Dose is just the energy per unit mass. So how much energy is the radiation depositing in a given amount of tissue as measured per unit mass? That's what dose is. And our SI units for dose are gray. So if we use our SI units of just joules per kilogram, then we get gray. And in CT, we're usually talking about much less than a gray. So we typically use milligray or one one thousandth of a gray to describe our units. And we'll typically want to have a plastic cylinder because that's a physics type representation of a human, right? If we think about our human being mostly made up of water, we'll take a plastic cylinder and we'll use either a 32 or a 16 centimeter plastic cylinder, depending on if we're thinking of imaging the head or imaging the body. And both of those will be used as reference in what we call our CTDI measurements. So we have our plastic cylinder in our CT gantry positioned where the patient would be. And then if we have an axial acquisition, you can see this is the source trajectory that's going around the patient or the phantom in this case. And we're gonna be irradiating that phantom from each of the angles around. And then we're gonna be measuring the dose using our ion chamber. We've got a link below to a description of how ion chambers work. And they basically are just ionizing the air inside of that ion chamber. And that ionization of the air then will create a current, which is then read and used in a calibrated system. So the reading coming out of, from our ion chamber here will be in milligray. And we'll typically measure both on the outside and on the inside of the CTDI phantom. And the CTDI is a weighted combination of the outer measurement and the inner measurement. So we call these periphery, the ones on the outside, and then the one in the middle is just the center measurement. It's a weighted combination between the outer and the inner measurements, all made with the same ion chamber. And the dosimetry gets a little bit more complicated on modern systems where we have a wider acquisition at one time or what we call a cone beam CT. On those types of systems, the CTDI has changed over time from CTDI to CTDI 100 to CTDI vol. As a technologist, you generally don't have to worry about those details. The manufacturers will take that into account. As we mentioned in our earlier videos on dose, for CT, we're typically starting with absorbed dose, and then we're going from absorbed dose to equivalent dose. And in order to go from absorbed dose to equivalent dose, all we have to do is multiply by one. That's pretty easy because we're using x-rays and they have a weighting factor of one. Then to go from equivalent dose to effective dose, we have to add up all the different tissue types. And the impact of those different tissue types is depending on the radiation weighting factor because different tissue types are more or less sensitive to radiation damage. Actually calculating the effective dose is quite difficult in reality because you either need to have a phantom, which is an anthropomorphic phantom, to take radiation measurements throughout that phantom. Or if you're using a human body, you would do what we call a Monte Carlo simulation. So you get a CT of the patient, and then you model each of the different regions, and you figure out how much dose is distributed throughout the body in the different regions, and then 
we can calculate the effective dose by adding up those contributions to all the different body parts. These are good research tools, but in the clinic, we're looking for something simpler that can be carried out relatively easily and is an approximation for these types of more advanced methods. We talked about CTDI so far, and CTDI is normalized to a given acquisition and it doesn't take into account the length of the acquisition or the amount of the patient along the Z direction or the superior inferior direction that was irradiated. So for that, we need a new unit and we call that dose length product. For that, all we do is we take the CTDI and we multiply by how long of an area was exposed. So if we take CTDI by the region that was exposed, that's what's called the dose length product. We'll have units of milligray times centimeters and we'll indicate the region that was exposed. In CT, we're typically using a simpler approximation like we talked about than the full approach above using Monte Carlo. So we'll typically start with that CTDI measured in the plastic phantom. Then we'll multiply by the distance. That'll give us our DLP. And then the final step we need is a weighting factor. This is an approximate weighting factor which takes into account the age and the anatomy which is being irradiated. So this weighting factor will take into account the specifics of the different types of tissues which are gonna be irradiated, for instance, in a head scan or a scan of the head and neck. These are the values for the weighting factor and they include the different ages from young all the way to adult in this direction here. And then in this direction here, we're looking at the different anatomies of interest which are typically scanned in a CT scan. The values in the calculator, if we wanna go from the DLP to the millisieverts or to the effective dose. Now that you know the basics of going from CTDI to DLP to effective dose in millisieverts, check out some examples we have and we'll have this linked up right here when it's ready of using this effective calculator to quickly determine the values in millisieverts